So I have this duck that, like, when you squeeze its mouth, like, a beak, it makes a quacking noise, and it's up there, and nobody squeezed its beak, and it just made a quacking noise, so, like, uh, my house is possessed. <laughs> and today I'm here with my October wrap-up for 2018. I read a total of nine books this month which I'm actually very impressed with myself because it was a midterm season and it was just a lot going on at one time. So I didn't actually do a lot of reading I thought but apparently I did so without further ado let us get started. So the first book I actually finished was The Lying Woods and this is by Ashley Elston and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Owen Foster who seems to have the perfect life. He's had everything he's ever wanted. Then one day it's all taken away from him when he discovers that his father skipped town after stealing all the money from his employees from the oil company he runs. So now Owen and his mother need to face the aftermath of what his father did and they move back to their hometown where they're not exactly welcome. Their starts receiving threats and that's when Owen stumbles across Preacher Woods and a man named Gus who offers him a job. As time goes on, Owen learns more about his father, the secrets of the small town, and where his father might have run off to. I only ended up giving it a 3.5 stars because it started off extremely slow and honestly I was bored for the first half of the story. But as little tidbits of information get revealed to you, it starts to pick up and you get really invested in the characters and you really want to know like what's going on in the big picture. It's also really cool to have the dual perspective between Owen and Noah. You learn more about Noah throughout the story. I don't want to give a lot about him because he's kind of like a mystery figure. It was really cool to have the present day timeline where Owen was the one talking but then you also had 1999 where Noah was the one talking and it was really interesting to see the parallels and all of that. I think that the way that the two storylines and the big picture in the end came together was really well done. I definitely did not see the big twist at the end which I love in thriller books because usually I can call the ending so I think that it was a good one just I gave it a lower rating than I probably would have if the beginning wasn't as slow as it was. The next book I have is a graphic novel and it is Spill Zone The Broken Vow by Alex Puvaland and Scott Westerfeld. This is the sequel to the Spill Zone series so I don't really want to give a synopsis because it kind of gives away what happened in the first novel, but I did end up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. My favorite part of the novel is definitely the bright artwork. I think it really like grabs your attention and kind of gets the point of cross of what they're trying to tell in the story. I did like the first installment of this series a lot more than this one, but it still had the super creepy vibe that I love so much from the first book. It leaves you on this huge cliffhanger, but from what I've read, this is the last book in the series, so I'm kind of confused with what's going on but maybe there'll be another installment I guess we'll see the next book I read is City of Saints and Thieves and this is by Natalie C Anderson and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars it follows a girl named Tina who after the murder of her mother joins a gang called the Goondas. For four years, Tina bides her time with this gang and she's planning her revenge for the man named Mr. Greyhill who shot her mother. She's always been very confident in the identity of the man who killed her mother, but when new things come to light, she soon realizes that everything that she thought she knew may not be true after all. One thing I found super interesting about this book is that the story is largely based off of the author's work in Kenya. It was obvious that the author put a lot of time and research into the book, which I really appreciated. The book is marketed as a thriller which I personally would not market it as that. I think it's more of a mystery. It was kind of slow and a little bit boring in my opinion. Like it wasn't thrilling, like my heart wasn't racing throughout the entire time but I did really enjoy trying to figure out who killed Tina's mother and I definitely did not expect it to be who it was in the end. Like I said before, I think that the pacing was way too slow in my opinion and no action really happened until the last like 100 pages of the book and it is a pretty chunky book in my opinion so that just wasn't for me. I think that the author did an amazing job describing the setting of Kenya and Congo. It was just so vivid in your mind while you were reading and I also really think all the characters were very well developed. They all were just so well done in my opinion. I really liked Tina as a main character. She was very headstrong and I loved how protective she was over her little sister Kiki. I loved Boy Boy and how sassy he was. He was probably my favorite character. The one major complaint that I have is the romance. It seemed like it was just there for 
the sake of being there. Like, I don't think it was needed in the plot. I think everything could have been left out, but that's just my opinion. The next book I picked up was Uninvited, and this by Sophie Jordan. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars as well. This book follows Davy Hamilton, who has the perfect life, so when she discovers that she is a carrier of the homicidal tendency syndrome, HTS, she's very surprised. Having HTS means that one day she will kill somebody solely based off of her genetic predisposition. So when others discover that she has this gene, her entire life flips upside down because her friends and her boyfriend desert her and she's uninvited from her very fancy private school. She's sent to a new school and that's when she meets Sean who is also an HTS carrier and she needs to decide whether or not she can trust him. The whole premise of the book was super intriguing to me and I was very excited to read it but it definitely fell short for me. The whole pacing was very slow. Nothing really happened throughout the whole book. It was a lot of just Davy complaining about her situation. For the most part, I was just bored. I was also kind of disappointed with the ending. It seemed like it happened really quickly and just nothing was really resolved. It was just like, and it's over. I do realize that there is a sequel for the book, so I'm assuming that's where the story progresses, but I was just wanting a little bit more from this book. Overall, I think it was just like average. Like it's nothing that I need to keep on my shelf. I'm never gonna reread it. So you'll probably see it in an unhaul video very soon. <laughs> Next book I have, I actually have a full review up, so I'm not gonna go into details about it. But if you want to check out the review, check that out for my full thoughts. But it is The Adventure Zone by the McElroy brothers, and I ended up giving this a five out of five stars. It's a graphic novel. It is so good. Check out my review if you want to see all my thoughts on it. But like, read this graphic novel. It's amazing. The next book I have is A Good Idea and this is by Christina Morocco and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Betty and Finley who have been best friends their entire life and that's when Finley moves away and they agree that they're going to meet up again in New York as college roommates. But a year before that is meant to happen, Betty is murdered by her boyfriend. The only evidence for the case is Calder's confession, which everybody believes to be coerced. So it's basically thrown out. So now, seeking the truth about what really happened to Betty, Finley decides to go back to her hometown and cause a little bit of trouble. For the first half of the book, I was really bored. It was very slow pacing. Nothing happened. I thought about putting the book down, honestly. Most of the book was just Finley being mad at the world and everybody in it and it was a lot of her just making really stupid decisions that really bothered me. The second half of the book is when things picked up for me and I actually started enjoying the story. None of the characters are particularly likable but I did enjoy Finley as a main character only because she was an outsider to the murder. Everybody else seemed to know what happened but since Finley was living in New York she had no idea what actually happened so it was interesting to see her take on things. The mystery aspect of the book was average at best. Like I felt that it dragged on way too long and I just kind of got to the point where I was like okay just end and then it ended and it was just tied up way too nicely in a little pretty bow. It just kind of irked me but I mean, it was an average book. It's nothing special in my opinion. The next book I have, I absolutely adored so much. It is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. I rarely like the second book in a series more than I did the first, but I definitely think that this one was better than The Diviners, which is insane because I love The Diviners. I listened to this on audiobook like I did The Diviners, and I just think that these are such amazing audiobooks like they instantly immerse you into this creepy spooky atmosphere and you can't stop listening because it's just so creepy. There's just so many subplots that are woven into the big plot line and it's just so well done how everything comes together and just Libba Bray is such a talented writer. Obviously everybody has read this series. I still need to read the third book. I'm so excited for it but if you haven't read it, The Slight Chance, you should probably read this because it is so freaking good. I also loved how we got to see our favorite characters from the first book, but then we were also introduced to new characters. We also got to see very minor characters from the Diviners be more developed in this book, which I really liked, but as I said, if you haven't read this, read it because like, 
so good. This book I read was also a 5 out of 5 stars and it is Lying in Wait by Liz Nugent and oh my god this book blew my mind. I was so addicted to it. It follows a woman named Lydia who seems to be living the perfect life. She has a husband who is a very high judge. She has a son named Lawrence who is just the apple of her eye and she also is living in this giant mansion. But when Lawrence discovers a very dark secret that they have been hiding since they met Annie Doyle, everything changes. So this, this book was a lot like the tagline is my husband did not mean to kill Annie Doyle but the lying tramp deserved it and that's what had me hooked I was very excited to read it and it definitely lived up to my expectations in my opinion it had the perfect pacing I did not want to put the book down I was so invested in this story and the characters and everyone involved I loved the triple perspective you get Lydia Lawrence and Karen who is Annie Doyle's sister her perspective and it was just so well done in my opinion like I was mind blown the ending just poof, like I was not expecting that I definitely think that I found a new favorite author I'm gonna pick up her debut uh, unraveling Oliver I think it's called I bought it at the thrift store the other day so I'm very excited definitely recommend this book if you guys are looking for like a really good thriller this this is it and then the final book that I picked up was the breakdown by B.A. Paris and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars it follows a woman named Cass who after a night out there is a big storm so she decides that she's going to take the back road home even though her husband told her specifically not to take that road. On her way home, Cass comes across another car sitting in the forest on the back road and she can't tell if the woman inside is in trouble because of the storm, so she decides that she will wait a little bit, see what's going on, and when the woman gives no indication that she needs help, she drives back to her house. The next day, Cass discovers that the woman in the car was actually murdered that night and so she's feeling very guilty. To make matters worse, Cass has been very forgetful lately. She's forgetting very simple things and this is scaring her but the only thing that she cannot seem to forget is her guilt and that woman in the car. Although times the book was very predictable, I was still very invested in the story and I really wanted to know what was going on. It was very slow pace but it worked well for this book. I think that the biggest downfall for this book was the character development. I didn't really care what happened to the characters, I just wanted to know what was happening, if that makes sense. Cass was also a big downfall for me. I just think that she was very naive with her whole situation going on. I'm trying to be very vague because I don't want to give the book away, but she just kind of bothered me and it was kind of annoying to just keep being constantly reminded that she's forgetful, she's forgetful, she's forgetful. Like, we get it, she doesn't remember things. But like I said, I was more invested on figuring out who the murderer was rather than Cass's story and what she was going through. But overall, like, it was entertaining while I was reading it, so I do recommend it if you guys like thrillers. Alright guys, so that was my wrap-up video. I did not do a very good job with synopsises today. I'm a little bit distracted. It's my birthday, so I have a lot of, like, surprises coming, so my mind's kind of on that, so sorry. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!